septal abscess septum is a partition between the nasal cavity so this septum alone i'll show you the, in the next diagram it will look like this so the septum anteriorly in the front part it's made of a cartilage and posteriorly behind it's bony the front part the cartilage part is what i have shown here so the green color is a cartilage and it derives its blood supply for its nourishment from the covering around it that is the perichondrium which is red in color so the blood supply for this cartilage comes from the covering around it so what happens is if in case of trauma or assault or fall there will be blood collection between the cartilage and the covering which is called as the perichondrium so this is called septal hematoma so in case the septal hematoma gets secondary infected it can lead to septal abscess that is one cause for septal abscess second cause being furunculosis that is infection of the hair follicles hairs will be seen in this area inside if there is infection of the hair follicle that is called as furunculosis so that can spread from here anteriorly it can spread to the septum and very rarely it can be septal abscess can be secondary to typhoid and other conditions now the common presentation there will be in case of trauma there will be history of trauma and there will be changes in the face and specifically regarding this condition the complaints will be they will have mild fever and mild weakness of the body and redness over the area these will be the complaints of the patient and they'll say there there'll be there is pain and pin pricking sensation inside the nose and mild swelling in the upper part of the neck also so on examination and another thing they will not be able to breathe there will be nasal obstruction and they have to open their mouth and breathe so on examination there will be mild fever this whole external nose will be red in color mild red in color and it will be tender to touch in your touch it will be painful so examination of the nose inside there will be bulge as you see in this picture and on examination of the neck there will be small small structures will be tender to touch these are the lymph nodes which is which is secondary to the infection here now if it is because of the trauma and secondary getting infected in case of trauma there will be a fracture of the x-ray uh, we uh, fracture of the nasal bones too so we need a x-ray also so to confirm the diagnosis before just for the septal abscess to confirm the diagnosis we can aspirate the swelling here and you will the aspirate will be pus but this is difficult in a child and it's easy in a case of an adult so investigation we'll do an x-ray and we had to do a pre anesthesia panel so pre anesthesia panel is nothing but the, all the investigations which includes blood test or x-ray which is needed to take the patient to the operation theater that is pre anesthesia panel and septal abscess is a ent emergency why i am saying so because like how i have explained before the septum for the normal survival it needs blood supply from the covering which is called the perichondrium so the perichondrium is separated from the cartilage and in between you have an abscess so it is it is devoid of blood supply it is not getting its nor normal nourishment so without nourishment it can survive up to 3 days after that it is it gets eaten up it gets destroyed so what happens is it will form a small hole which is called as septal perforation and it it doesn't happen in 2 3 days <laughs> it happens uh, within a few days and as and when the septal perforation increases the support of the nose goes and the sh nose shape itself can change so the operation has to be done at the earliest that is within 2 to 3 days so that doesn't mean that in the first day when the when you do a surgery you are totally free of complication it only means the complication rate is lesser now uh, you get admitted and we'll take a concern from you and in that concern paper it will be written what is the diagnosis that is septal abscess what is the operation incision and drainage of septal abscess if necessary we have to do for the uh, nasal bone close reduction also if necessary so but we'll concentrate on the main topic here so uh, drainage incision drainage of the septal abscess and complication being septal perforation and saddle nose and sometimes even after operation sometimes they'll develop facial swelling which is called facial cellulitis and they can have 
other complications too. So this also may be noted down. But relating to the surgery and the main condition, these are the main two complications. So once you go through the paper, you read the whole thing, you sign and write your name and date, we'll countersign, the doctor also will countersign it. Now, meanwhile, the investigation pre-anesthesia panel workup will be going on and it will be ready within an hour, hour or so. Now, if the patient happened to be a child, we'll take with all the investigation, the child will be taken to a pediatrician for pediatrician clearance for fitness for surgery. In case that patient is an adult, we'll need a medical clearance, physician clearance for fitness for surgery. Once we get that clearance, we have to meet the anesthetist to see whether the child or the adult is fit for anesthesia or not. Now all the document the, and the preliminary work is done. Now they are ready for surgery. So four hours prior to surgery, nothing to be taken per orally. No, nothing to drink or nothing to eat. Now the surgery is incision and drainage of the septal abscess. So the abscess will be completely drained, removed. Now once the abscess is drained, we need to keep a small drain here. And along with that, we used to keep a ribbon gauze for pressure also. So now instead of this long ribbon gauze, we used to give sponge like this. So this will be kept for 24 to 48 hours to prevent the recollection of blood or abscess, whatever. Now after the surgery, which usually takes less than two hours, inclusive of everything, when you come back to the room, for next four hours after reaching the room, you are, you are requested not to drink or eat anything. Meanwhile, the staff nurse, the floor nurse, she will come and monitor all your vitals like temperature, heart rate or pulse rate, blood pressure and she will check everything is fine or not and, uh, and you will have an IV line, IV drip going on and IV antibiotic and painkillers too. After a period of 4 hours, first you will be asked to drink water. If you are not throwing it out, you are not vomiting, you can take liquid diet that day. Now, the nasal pack it will be kept for 24 to 48 hours. After that period, that pack will be removed along with the drain. But discharge is not on the same day. After the removal of the pack, the, it will be kept, the patient will be kept for observation for 24 hours. And we will do uh, nasal suction repeatedly, maybe once or twice, and they will apply nasal drops too. Now, the subsequent day, if you are fine, you will be discharged. Some hospitals, they have a protocol that you need to take IV antibiotic 5 to 7 days. That's also fine. If the doctor feels that the patient can be discharged 48 hours after the 48 hours after the surgery, that's also fine. But in case you are, dis you are discharged within a short time, you need to take a full course of oral higher dose of antibiotic for full 10 days. The reason for that I shall mention. Now, the pack has been removed, you are ready for discharge. So the discharge advice will be you will be, giving a, you will be given a higher dose of strong antibiotic for 10 days, painkiller for 3 days and after the 3 days if you need to take the painkiller only if necessary, only if it's painful. And nasal drops, 3 drops 3 times daily for 3 to 5 days and if the, if the patient happened to be more than 15 years, you need to do a nasal wash also. Now these are the discharge advice. Now I have mentioned that this is an ENT emergency. And I have told you the cause for it. Now the complications, if you don't manage at the earliest, like how I mentioned, the first two complications, septal perforation, saddle nose, not only that, you, the patient can develop uh, facial swelling and cellulitis. And this abscess can spread from here to the brain. And it can result in meningitis. Likewise, the abscess can spread from here to a venous system, which is a paired venous system on both sides here. It's called the cavernous system. So it has got so many important nerves uh, related to that. So the infection from here, it can spread to the venous system also, resulting in some called cavernous sinus thrombosis. That is also a dreaded condition. So this is taken as an emergency and it is drained at the earliest and all the abscess removed and strong antibiotic of higher dose given to the maximum number of days and reviewed at the proper time. Now, at the time of discharge, you will be asked to review after 7 days. So, we expect improvement, that is nasal breathing to improve every day. No fever and you should be active. In case after discharge of 2-3 days, the, you feel feverish again 
and the nose is getting blocked please do not wait for next seven days for review go back at the earliest to see whether it is getting recollected or not so this is the most important take home advice the antibiotic has to be taken properly and the nasal wash as per the age is has to be taken properly and your uh, review will be after seven days so when you review after seven days you are absolutely fine you are able to breathe like before there is no fear that's it we have handled the condition septal abscess as well so this is in short about septal abscess thank you so much mm -hmm.